Hi, Larry Copey here. Welcome back to my blog. Today I wanted to talk about short sales. Given our market conditions right now and all the upheaval that we've seen over the last few years, short sales are a very real part of the market and I get a lot of questions from people about short sales so I wrote down a list of questions that I receive, the frequently asked questions that I get. I wanted to go over those with you here today, maybe provide some insight to you and bring some value to you in case this is something that, uh, that you're wondering about or concerned about uh, if you're faced with something like this. So what is a short sales question comes up and a short sale is basically a negotiated settlement between a seller owner and the lender that has a loan against the property. And the situation would come up if more is owed against a property than the property can actually be sold for. So as an example, if somebody bought a property for six hundred thousand three years ago, today it's worth four, but they've got a loan of five hundred thousand, then in order for that property to be sold, there's a hundred thousand dollar gap that has to be filled. The seller would either have to write a check for that or if they don't have the resources, they would ask the lender to accept the four hundred thousand as payment in full. So, who pays for the fees associated with a short sale? Well, the lender pays the fees for the short sale. What ends up happening is the costs uh, for selling a property get deducted from the net proceeds. So if there's a $400,000 you know, purchase price and it costs, say, $25,000 in, in fees, then the net to the lender would be $375,000. They would be asked to accept that as payment in full on a $500,000 loan. So why would a bank even approve a situation like that? You know, that's a question that comes up often. Well, if you're a lender and you're looking at a, an owner that has a property and it looks like it's going to foreclosure for whatever reason, they're not able to keep up with the payments or they're moving and they don't have the resources, rather than take the six, nine months that it would take to resolve this property, if, a, if an offer is presented to them, oftentimes they'll just accept the offer instead of going down the foreclosure road because oftentimes they're ahead money-wise if they just accept the short sale. So mo banks are motivated to, uh, to resolve the issues and get them out of the way. Um, how do you qualify for a short sale or, or do I qualify for a short sale? That's a question that comes up often. Well, if you have a bona fide hardship, you know, if you're moving, if you had a pay cut, if you know, you're loan adjusted, if you, know, you, you lost your job or for other reason you have to move and you can't uh, pay the difference between what's owed, your property value has dropped below what's owed, and you don't have the money, then you are a candidate for a short sale. Now, will my credit suffer? That's a question that comes up often. Yes, your credit's going to take a hit. Uh, it's probably going to be 100, 200 points or so. And the good news is, though, you'll be able to recover that in 24 months. You know, if you keep everything up, you can probably get your credit all the way back to where it is right now uh, in about 24 months. I've seen it done in as little as 18 months. So, why would you short sale versus rent or maybe just you know power it through? Oftentimes a lot of people are doing so because they have a hardship uh, and their property can't be sold and, and they have to do it otherwise they'll end up in foreclosure. That's one of the reasons. Another reason that uh, people look at rather than rent it out, um, you know many sellers recognize that uh, it's going to take less time to recover your credit on a short sale than it will for the market to return the equity that you lost. So in, an instant, in a situation where the properties were 75, 100, 150,000 less than what's owed, it could take several years before the property value would, would be back up to where you could sell it for what's owed and break even. And at the same time, renting it out, oftentimes the rents are under what the actual payment is, so the seller is still writing a check monthly just to you know, keep uh, the payments up. So in that scenario, if they don't have the money, oftentimes they'll approach a short sale instead. What are the legal aspects? That's a great question. And you know, a couple of things that come up, owner-occupied versus non-owner-occupied, and the type of loan, whether it was purchase money or whether it was a refi. And these are questions for your attorney, but uh, you know, lenders can come after you for the balance. Uh, oftentimes we're able to negotiate that part out if, they, if your loan is one that they can come after you. They will negotiate that out oftentimes, not always. And so this is a question for your attorney. And yes, they can come after you. Another question that comes up, what are the tax implications? Well, you know, if a lender takes a short in a situation like uh, the one we we're just explaining, where they're taking 375 against 500, they're going to take a loss of about 125,000. They're going to write that off on their taxes. They're going to send you a 1099, and you'll have to claim that as ordinary income. Now, if you qualify under the Mortgage Forgiveness Debt Relief Act, you're going to get a corresponding write-off, and it'll cancel that that tax debt. And so that would be a question for your accountant. A lot of people qualify for that, and that comes down to whether it was owner-occupied and whether it was a primary residence. Um, I hope this information was informative. 
If you have any other questions about short sales, if you're thinking about, do, you know, if you're in a situation where you may have to face a short sale or somebody you know is facing a short sale, give me a call, email me, we'll set up an appointment, you know, be confidential, we'll take a look at your situation. I would recommend you do three things. Talk to a competent real estate agent, talk to a competent attorney, and talk to a competent uh, accountant before you make your final decision. Short sale isn't always the thing to do. Sometimes you're in a, in a situation that might be best just to let it go back to the bank. Uh, but if short sale is an option, you need to know the ins and the outs. Call me. We'll set up that appointment. We'll take a look at your situation. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Have a nice day.